Shalom. All praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those are the men that taught me the truth for the Bible, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakar Kodash, Brak Thumb, to the elect of Israel that's got across the four corners of the globe. So, what we're looking at here is an article from www.christianpost.com, okay, and it's concerning this uh, false prophet. Right, this false teacher known as Jim Baker, right, and um, you know, the real Christians, I should add, right, the real Christians, when you read about the Christians in the Bible, it's referring to us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? The word Christian simply means anointed, all right, and us being um, Israelites, okay, us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashan, Shai, has anointed us as a people, okay, we're the only anointed nation. Out of the 18 nations here on earth Okay Now you know We're going to read a few Paragraphs from this article And basically break down What we're reading And uh, defend the gospel Alright Because you see this false prophet This false teacher Jim Baker He's deceiving He's deceiving the masses of people man Alright With you know His so called revelation That he received from Who he ignorantly call God Alright And as a matter of fact Since I said that Let's start there well, let's start in um, the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, because that's what our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, prophesied about, okay? Because in, you know, these last days that we're living in, you know, where Esau was going to be ruling, and um, uh, the Lord told us that they were going to be, what well, I was going to say here, let me just read it. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, okay? And we're living in the, at the end of the world right now, okay? The end of an age, the end of a rulership, okay? The end of Esau's rulership, Esau being the so-called white man, okay? We're living at his end, okay? And uh, what the heavenly son, right, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai is about to expound unto them, right, is, are all signs of his return, okay? So verse 4, it says, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, which I'll read this verbatim, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, the word that should be here, which, you know, when you go back to the ancient Hebrew, it should be Mashiach, okay? Which the word Mashiach simply means anointed, okay? And we here at Great Millstone in particular, we don't like to use the word Christ, okay? Because our Lord, he wasn't a Greek. Okay, he was a Hebrew Israelite, okay, from the tribe of Judah, right? So, you know, a lot of you, you know, Jakes out there, a lot of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans get mixed up with that. Okay, you get mixed up with this uh, title here, Christ, thinking that's our Lord's name, okay? And it's not, okay? Our Lord's name is Yahweh Shai, right? And Yahweh Shai is from the ancient Hebrew, Yah, meaning he, Yahweh Shai, meaning deliverer, okay? So when you put it together, it means he is the deliverer, because why? He's going to deliver one third of our people, okay, in this coming destruction, right? Yahweh Shai is going to deliver one third of these so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, primarily here in the Americas, okay, and uh, around the world, okay, when he returns with the holy angels and what people even call UFOs, right? Because that's how our Lord's re returning, right? With these uh, so called spaceships, which we know to be the chariots of Israel, okay? But I'll read this again. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. All right, and uh, what we're going to read here is a prime example of that, okay? And this is what uh, Yahweh Shai prophesied about, you know, individuals like this, Jim Baker, and not just, you know, Jim Baker, you've got wicked, false teachers within this truth, okay? Uh, namely, the Comforter, right? Jermaine Grant, you know, it's also speaking about wicked niggas that's within, you know, this thing of ours, if you will, okay? This, you know, this Israelite awakening, right? It's also speaking about those individuals there. Again, you know, names such as the Comforter, uh, even um, Nathaniel of the IUIC, all right? Because he's not teaching the true doctrine of, Yah of Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, okay? So it applies to, you know, individuals like that too. But we're focusing on, you know, this so-called Christian uh, Jim Baker, all right? So it says, Jim Baker, God told me first horse of the apocalypse is now released. Trump is requisite before the end, okay, and this isn't true, right, the the first horse of the apocalypse, which is going into, you know, uh, our Lord's return, Yahweh Shai, okay, again, when he returns with the, the holy angels in what people even call UFOs, that hasn't taken place yet, all right, so, you no, know, this guy is a, is a, he's a false teacher, man, he's a false prophet, and again, this is what Yahweh Shai 
so that we should look out for concerning his return, right? That's what we just read there in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, right? So reading on, it goes on to say, and this is the individual here, by the way, you know, he got this uh, Edomite-looking individual here, <clears throat> which the Edomites, you know, <laughs> you're going into slavery when our Lord returns, man, all right? Yahweh Shai is going to put you into slavery alongside his elect, all right? We're going to put you into hardcore bondage, hardcore slavery for a thousand years, and then after that, you know, a thousand years, you're going to be destroyed, right? You're going to be wiped off from the face of the earth, right? That, and that's according to the judgment of who you ignorantly call God, who we know as Yahweh. Okay, that's that's the Lord's judgment pursuant to Obadiah, uh, verse eighteen. Okay, now it goes on to say, controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that the Most High, or that God spoke to him as he was re reading Revelation six in the Bible and told him that the first horseman of the apocalypse has been released upon the world with President Donald Trump being a represent before the end times. Now, first of all. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, again, who the world ignorantly called God, who we know as Yahweh, all right, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, they're not dealing with televangelists, all right? They're not dealing with these church preachers, all right? Whether it be um, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jake, so on and so forth, uh, Al Sharpton, the Lord ain't dealing with these individuals, man. The Lord is dealing with his men, all right? His servants, all right? Which we believe those, those men, again, be begin with the apostles and the elders and the men of Great Millstone, man. Right, we're coming in the true ancient Hebrew names of our Lord and Savior, man. Okay, we're, we're teaching the truth of the Bible, man. We're breaking it down. We're letting you know who the, who the nations are that you read about in the Bible. We're letting you know of things that are going to take place before they take place, right? Such as um, the Mark of the Beast, which is the RFID slash NFC microchip, right? We're telling our people, all right, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are Israelites, we're letting you know that there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, man. Okay, these, you know, televangelists like Jim Baker, they're not telling you that stuff, man. Right, so Yahweh Bashman al Shai is not, is not dealing with this guy, man. Right, I read it again, it says, Controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that God spoke to him as he was reading Revelation 6 in the Bible. Right, now it tells us in um, Proverbs 30 and 4. Well, let me get that real quick. It says, you know, if thou can tell the Lord's name, man, right? Now, if, if this was a man of the Lord, he would be coming in the name of the Lord, okay? Where's that now? Proverbs uh, 30 and 4. Let me get that real quick. Yep, it says, who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Who have bound the waters in a garment, all right? And this is all speaking about the heavenly father, who this individual, you know, Jim Baker refers to as God. Okay, and that's a Greek title. That's not his name. It says, who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell, right? Now, the only ones that can tell, pursuant to this here in Revelation, the 14th chapter, the only ones that can tell, right, of the Lord's name are the, the, the 144,000, man, that you read about in Revelation, the 7th chapter, and the remaining elect, man. Okay, we have the names of the Heavenly Father, Okay, and his son, right? And his name is Yahweh, okay? And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. This is Revelation 14, verse 1. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads, okay? So it lets you know right there that it's the elect, okay? The 144,000 that have the Lord's name, man, right? It's not only the, the father's name that they have, but they also have their Lord and Savior's name, man, Yahweh Shai. Okay, so from the from the jump, this individual here, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, and we just proved it. So it says, controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that God spoke to him as he was reading Revelation six in the Bible. Okay, which you know, Revelation six, you know, um, hasn't been opened up into this individual man. All right, it says in it says this in Amos chapter three. Let me get that real quick. It says um. Surely the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets to his servants. All right, this is Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord Yahweh, which you know we're reading God here in all caps, which the, the name that you're gonna see here in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh. Okay, it says, Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, okay? And the secrets that you read about, you know, in this particular verse is speaking about the whole Bible, okay. This Bible has been sealed unto the masses of people and the Lord has opened up the mind of his servants. Okay, again, beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men of Great Millstone, 
right? The Lord has opened up our minds to receive his secrets, man. And what's what some of his secrets, the prophecies that you read about in the Bible, man, okay? And these things have been revealed un unto us, okay? Now, there's some of you out there that's, you know, probably watching this, this lesson and thinking that I'm making quite a bold statement to say that, you know, we're the servants of Yahweh Bashmael Shai, right? Beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men of Great Millstone. Well, let me prove it, right? Let me prove it by going to, what's that, Luke chapter 14, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me see. You know, I want to say it's Luke 14 and... Let me see. Verse... Verse 16, I'll start with verse 16. This is uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 16, all right? And this is going to prove that we are indeed the servants of who the world is going to call God and Jesus Christ, who we know as Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, okay? We're going to prove it here in this scripture. Uh, again, beginning with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. It says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. Right? Now, this certain man that's being referred to here is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, okay? And he's bidding many to the marriage, okay? The hopeful elect of the nation of Israel in particular. Right, and how is he doing that by sending forth his servants to actually go out there on the highways and byways, you know, to to call on to his people, man. Right, those that he's chosen in these last days to receive this truth, okay. And it's going it's going to go on to say that this is verse seventeen. It says, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. Right, and that's speaking about us brothers that have been called into this truth, okay. Called into the, the mercies of Yahweh Bashmael Shai, called to receive this understanding of the, of the Bible, okay? We've been bidden to the marriage, right? Because that's what's taking place right now, right? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is remarrying us through our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. That's how we're uh, being joined, which that's what the word marry means. That's how we're being joined back onto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, right? Through our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, which I should say, you know, comes in the volume of the book. Right, and that's how we're that's how we're being joined back into onto our, our power, man. Okay, the heavenly father Yahweh through our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. It says, Come for all things are now ready. Verse 18. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused, right? And that's speaking about, you know, certain individuals that come to this truth, right? They fall they fall away, you know, they start making excuses for not uh, doing the work of the Lord, which is, you know, teaching, going out there on the, on the street corners, putting up shows, so on and so forth, man, feeding the, the lambs of Yahweh Shai, okay, that's what's, that's what's being spoken about there in the 18th verse, reading on verse 19, and we have a, a you know, I should mention, you know, we actually have examples of that, you know, going on right now, okay, you know, within Israel, right, within this truth, which, that's the point that I should make, man, you know, you go to these churches, ask them to break down verse 18, and they're not going to be able to do that, man, because they're not in the truth. Okay, this is verse 19. It says, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. All right, again, you know, you've got, you know, wicked Jakes, wicked Israelites making excuses for not doing the work. Verse 20, it says, and another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Okay, verse 21, it says, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Right? And that's what we do when we go out there on the highways and byways, man. Okay? And the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, right? They've been doing this for the longest, man. Okay, going out there on, on the street corners teaching this truth, man. Right? You know, yelling out onto the poor, onto the maimed, onto the whole, onto the blind of our people. Okay, when it says poor, maimed, whole, blind, right? This is talking about our people, right? You so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans being in a destitute state, spiritually, that is. Okay, you're spiritually poor, you're spiritually maimed, you're spiritually blind, man. Blind to this truth. Okay, but Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has commanded to his servants. To actually go out there on the highways and byways to bring in bring in his elect, that's not what this um, individual um, Jim Baker is doing. You know, as you can see here in this picture, this Jim Baker guy, he's not he's not out on the streets, you know, out on the highways and byways, you know, bringing in the elect. He's not doing that, man. So he's not a servant of Yahweh Bashmael Shai, and that was the the point that I want to prove, man. Okay, so let me read this uh, paragraph again. It says, controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that God spoke to him 
as he was reading Revelation 6 in the Bible and told him that the first horseman of the apocalypse has been released upon the world, all right? And that's why it says what it says in, um, what's that, uh, the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. Yeah, I've got that lined up here. Um, it says this, this is Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, all right? And that's speaking about the elect of the nation of Israel, okay? The elect of our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? The Israelites were being purified were being made white in the sight of Yahweh Bashmei Ashai, which again, you know, the white here is, rep is a representation of the purity, okay, and we're, we're being tried, man, we're being put in that furnace of affliction where the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmei Ashai, you know, is um, testing us, right, through different, various different tribulations within our lives, okay, and that's what's taking place amongst the elect, and again, you know, Lord, when we be those men, that's a part of the elect, so it goes on to say, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, right? And the wicked begins with Esau, Edom, right? Esau, Edom being you so-called white people, right? You're the wicked of the Bible, okay? And then it trickles down to, you know, two-thirds of our own people, two-thirds of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that follow the so-called white man, right? You know, you're acting wickedly because you don't want to return to your Bash Me Shai. You're following instead, you know, the so-called white man and his laws, his philosophies, his doctrines. That So that makes you... Just as wicked as the wicked, right? And that's a message to you Israelites out there, man. Okay. And then it goes on to say, but the wise shall understand, right? So it's only the, the wise of the nation of Israel that's going to understand this Bible, okay? And as we can see, you know, in this um, article, this individual, Jim Baker, which, you know, I don't know if he's an Israelite or not. You know, I don't know this guy too well. You know, he could be an, an, an Israelite, you know, in a so-called white man's body. But as you can see by his speech, he doesn't truly understand the Bible, man. Okay? I read it again. It says, Controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that God spoke to him as he was reading Revelation 6, which, you know, the book of Revelation is, is sealed, man, unto the masses of people. Okay? And it's certainly sealed unto these so-called televangelists, these so-called church ministers, you know, whether it be uh, this guy Jim Baker, uh, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, uh, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, all these guys, the book of Revelation, the Bible as a whole, has been sealed unto these wicked individuals, man. Okay? It says, as he was reading Revelation 6 in the Bible and told him that the first horseman of the apocalypse has been released upon the world, which this actually hasn't taken place, all right? Not on a physical level, okay? You know, maybe on a spiritual level, you know, Yahweh Shai is, is with us because that's the, the horseman that's been, you know, referred to in Revelation 6. And verse 1 and 2, right, you know, that's that's speaking about Yahweh Shai, you know, who the world even called Jesus Christ. You know, he's been released unto the elect, okay, of Israel spiritually, okay, because what? He's dwelling amongst us right now, you know, feeding us this truth, you know, in a spiritual sense. But he hasn't returned physically, you know, as this um, Jim Baker would like to have you think, you know. You know, um, he goes on to say, with President Donald Trump being a respite before the end times, as a matter of fact, you know, since, you know, this guy is going into Revelation 6, let's just go, in, go into that real quick to prove that, you know, <clears throat> uh, the Lord hasn't returned yet, man, okay? So this is Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, right? And this is the vision that the Apostle John, right, on the Isle of Patmos received 2,000 years ago, around 96 AD. So it says, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, okay? Now this Lamb is referring to Yahweh Shai, okay? He's the unblemished Lamb. Okay, the ultimate sacrifice for the sons of Israel, okay, the children of Israel, that's the lamb. Yahweh Shai is the ultimate sacrifice for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel only, okay. It says, and, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Verse 2, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, so this is the horseman that Jim Baker is referring to in that article. Okay, this is what we're reading about here. Now, where it says white horse, this is actually referring to a massive, gigantic, if you will, uh, so-called spaceship or so-called UFO, which we know to be a chariot. Okay, this is how Yahweh Shai is returning. Okay, now the white represents purity. And the horse represents power. And it's also, you know, you know, you can take the horse as a vehicle, if you will. Because in the ancient days, okay, in the time of uh, the Apostle John, that's how people got around, okay, on, on horses, 
Okay, so it says, I'll read it again. And I saw and behold a white horse. So again, this white horse is actually referring to a massive father ship. Okay, a massive gigantic spaceship. It says, and he that sat on him had a bow. The, the one that's sitting on this massive white um, chariot, if you will, okay, is talking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. It says, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer, all right? And this actually hasn't taken place yet, not on a physical level, okay? When we go to, uh, what, Revelation, what's that, uh, 19, you know, we get more edif edification, you know, regarding our Lord's return, man. So this is Revelation 19, and I want to start at, let me see, verse 11. Yep, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. So as you can see, this is the Apostle John receiving the same vision, okay? It says, And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Right, and it's speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. He's the one that's faithful and true, okay? It says, and in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And that's what Yahweh Shai is coming back to do, okay? He's coming back to judge two-thirds of his own people, right? Two-thirds of the Israelites, two-thirds of his so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans for being wicked and following the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, who is the wicked, right? And Yahweh Shai is coming to make war with uh, Esau's elite, okay? You know, in the time of, of, of World War Three, okay? Yahweh Shai is going to fight against, you know, this current structure that we're living in, okay? That comes in form of... NATO and the EU, right? The the beast that we that we read about, you know, Revelation thirteen uh, goes on to say, verse twelve, his eyes were as a flame of fire, all right, and that's going into the prophecy of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai in the book of uh, uh, Genesis, the forty ninth chapter, and you can also read about, you know, how the Lord, you know, drank wine in Matthew nineteen, from verse uh, what eleven on down, you know, because when I so called Negroes, which you know, Yahweh Shai, if he was here today, you know, you would class him as being a so-called Negro. When us so-called Negroes drink wine, you know, the whites of our eyes turn red, right? So it says his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns because when Yahweh Shai returns, he's coming down to put down Esau, Edom and any other nation that thinks that they're going to be in uh, next up to rule, you know, as it says in what, Psalms 2. You know, why did the heathen rage and the heathen imagine a, a vain thing? Because right now you've got heathens such as the, the Moabites, which the Moabites would be so-called Chinese people. You think you're next up to rule after, after Esau goes down. But that's, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Okay, so it says, and on his head were many crowns. Because like I said, Yahweh Shai is returning to take the, the rulership from all these heathens, man. Okay, it says, and he had a name written that no man knew but, him, but he himself. Verse 13. It says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. All right, and his vesture being dipped in blood is a metaphor for all of the bloodshed that's going to take place when he returns. All right, so you know when we go back to this article, we should have a better understanding of uh, Revelation, the sixth chapter. All right, so I read it again. It says, controversial televangelist Jim Baker has claimed that God spoke to him as he was re reading Revelation six in the Bible and told him that the first horseman of the apocalypse has been released upon the world, with President Donald Trump being a respite before the end times, which, you know, that's... Mm, there's some truth to that, right? There's a little bit of truth to, you know, um, this guy, President Donald Trump, being um, before the end times. I wouldn't, you know, quite call him, call him a respite, because I believe when you go into that word respite, it means, you know, a time of rest. Because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, he didn't set up Donald Trump to be, you know, um, a resting point, okay? As you can see, what's happening to our people, you know, the so-called Mexicans, which would be of the tribe of Issachar, they're catching hell right now, man, right? Now, when you go to that word respite, if I'm not mistaken, let me look it up real quick. I believe it means uh, rest. Yep, as you can see here, it says respite, a short period of rest or relief from something difficult or unpleasant. Right, so if you was to ask the so-called Mexican, which would be um, an Issacharite of the nation of Israel, if they're, you know, if they're resting right now, their answer is going to be no, because our people, you know, again, mainly the Issacharites right now, they're catching hell. You know, this individual, President Donald Trump, is putting all hell upon our people, man, putting them in concentration camps, separating families and whatnot. So, uh, reading on, it says Baker, who regularly talks about the end of the world on his weekly television show and sells food items and survival gear meant to aid believers in perilous times 
said earlier this week that he recently asked God some big questions in prayer, which, you know, this, uh, uh, this paragraph here lets us know that this Jim Baker, he's not a man of the Lord, man, because, uh, you know, he's he, right now on a carnal level, he's preparing himself for perilous times, you know, for the great tribulation. As you can see, he's, you know, selling food, you know, selling survival gear kits and all that when the Lord didn't tell us to do that, man. As a matter of fact, let me prove that. You know, we can prove that when we go to uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, and around the 25th verse, you know, the Lord said that we shouldn't um, take no thought. Um, yep, this is Matthew chapter six, verse 25. All right. And this is our Lord, Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat. And the body than raiment because guess what you know the hopeful left of the nation of israel they don't they're not relying on these carnal things man they're, they're putting all their faith all their hope on the heavenly father's name man and his son's name and that's why it says what it says in um what proverbs 18 and, and 10 if i'm not mistaken well let me get that real quick you know i don't want to misquote it <clears throat> this is proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 it says the name of the Lord, which the name of the Lord, all right, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and the name of his only begotten son is Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, The name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Right? And who's the righteous speaking about? Again, the elect of the nation of Israel. So in a time of perilous, you know, troubles, in, in the time of Jacob's trouble, right, where all hell's gonna break loose upon our people, there's gonna be great famine, concentration camps. You know, great death and destruction. In that day, you know, the, the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be calling upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, to deliver them, man. Right? And the Lord is going to deliver them, man. Right? The Lord is going to provide the food. The Lord is going to provide clothes. All right? The Lord is going to provide shelter in that day. Right? And as you can see, you know, this individual, okay, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't got the spirit, man. He hasn't got the spirit of, of um, Yahweh Shai upon him, man. Okay? Um... And, you know, you know, mentioned about how this guy was sending up prayers, you know, trying to get some answers for his questions. But it says what in Psalms 109, I want to say verse 7 about how, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the prayers of the heathen. OK, hey, they're going to be they're going to be a sin unto them, man. OK. And yes, when I say heathen, that includes even two thirds of our own people, man. Right. Two thirds of these so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans that are following the so-called white man and all these other heathen nations. You're likened unto heathens, okay? You're likened unto, unto the Gentiles, man, the natural Gentiles, because you don't have the truth, you don't have the spirit. You know, but as I was saying, you know, again, I don't know if this Jim Baker guy is an Israelite or not, you know, but whether he is or not, he hasn't got the truth, right? And he's likened unto the wicked, right? Who is Esau, Edom, right? So, as I said, it says in Psalms 109, if I'm not mistaken, verse 7, about how uh, their, their, their prayers would become a sin unto them, man. Okay, the Lord isn't dealing with the prayers of the wicked, man. It says, reading on, you need to give me some answers. What is going on in this crazy world? There is such warfare amongst our own people in America, he pleaded. Okay, reading on, it says, he then said that he opened up the, his Bible and God brought me back to where I preach all the time. Revelation 6, namely the narrative about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay. Baker shared with the audience the exact words that he says God told him. Now listen to me. Donald Trump is a respite in these troubled times. And I sent him in grace to give you time to prepare for what's coming on earth. Which again, you know, um, we are living in a time of grace, right? But the time of grace only is for the nation of Israel, okay? The Israelites, which consists of us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And right now... Donald Trump, he's not a respite, okay? Because like I said, you know, our people, mainly the tribe of Issachar, right? You so-called Mexicans, you're catching hell right now, man, okay? But, you know, we are living in a time of grace and, you know, it will behoove you Israelites, it will behoove you to listen unto, unto the true men of the Lord, man, right? Which begin with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, man. Hey, we're living in a time where you can repent unto Yahweh Bashem Shai, okay? And that's what you ought to be doing, man, you know? Come back to your true nationality, serving Yahweh Bashem Shai. Uh, trying to keep the laws, touching the commandments to the best of your ability, all right? It goes on to say, Baker argued that the first horse of the apocalypse has started to ride as God revealed to him 
and said that the horseman is not Jesus Christ, but the evil spirit of the Antichrist that is conquering the world, which, as you can see, this guy is just, he's completely going off, right? He's not a man of the Lord, and how much Mel Shai is not dealing with him, all right? Because uh, the horseman, all right, that we read about, you know, when we go back to Revelation, the sixth chapter, and our, uh, what, the, the, the second verse, is indeed speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's read it again. This is Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. It says, And I saw and behold a white horse, all right, again, which is speaking about the chariot, right, that our Lord is coming back on. It says, And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer, all right? And why does it say he went forth conquering and to conquer? Because as it says in Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 7, if I'm not mistaken, there's going to be a war, all right, between the, uh, the two realms, okay, the spiritual realm and this carnal realm here on earth, okay, so this is Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, it says, and there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, okay, and Michael is directly underneath Yahweh Shai, okay, Yahweh Shai being the head angel, Michael, right, the, the, the archangel Michael, Michaela, right, being directly underneath um, Yahweh Shai, okay, so, where it says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. That's talking about when Yahweh Shai returns, okay, on the chariots with the multitude of angels who are going to be inside the chariots fighting against NATO and the EU, all right, which is this dragon that's being spoken about here, okay. The dragon is speaking about the, the, the Roman, the pagan Roman Empire, which is being, you know, revised in the form of NATO and the EU, okay. And that's why when we go back to Revelation, uh, the sixth chapter, it speaks about how, well, I'll read it again. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to, and to conquer, and coming back to conquer Esau, Edom, right, and, and this wicked kingdom that we're living in, man. Okay, and that actually hasn't taken place yet, not yet on a physical level, you know. So, you know, I'll read that last part of the, of the article again one, one last time, and then I'll close out. It says, Baker argued that the first horse of the apocalypse has started to ride as God revealed to him and said that the horseman is not Jesus Christ. We know our Lord's true uh, ancient Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai, okay, Hamashiach, okay, Yahweh Shai, the anointed, right? It says, but the evil spirit of the Antichrist that is conquering the world, which that's not true because it tells us in, um, well, let me see if I can find that. It says that about how there's many Antichrists, man, okay? Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yep, this is a uh, First John chapter two verse eighteen. It says, "Little children, it is the last time." Okay, and this is you know an epistle one to the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, Israelites only. Again, primarily the elect of our nation. It says, "And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come." Even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time, right? And that's how we know that we're living in the last days because there are many antichrists, man. You see, the word Christ simply means anointed, right? And Yahweh Shai, he is the anointed. And there's many that are anti his message, right? Which his message is that he's coming back only for his people, right? Only one third of his people, his people being the Israelites, the, the Israelites being us so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. And it's coming down to destroy this wicked society that we're living in, to put Esau, Edom and his descendants into captivity. That's his message, which his message is going out by way of his servants, the prophets, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone. And there's many, there's many people out there that are anti that message that we're bringing. OK, so that's the many antichrists that's being spoken about there, man. Right. So. That's basically it, you know, low winning this lesson was edifying. And you know, before I close out, you know, food for thought, you know, as as we read this uh title one one last time, it says Jim Baker, God told me first horse of the apocalypse is now released. Trump is respite before the end. Now my question to this individual, Jim Jim Baker, Revelation six and four, who's the red horse? Okay. What does the red horse in Revelation six and four represent? Who does it represent? Okay. Hey, that's a question that you, you know, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans should be, you know, asking your pastors, your so-called teachers, your so-called ministers in your churches, man. Right. And see if they give you the correct answer, because us here at Great Millstone, beginning with the apostles and the elders, 
right? And the men of Great Millstone, we have the answers, man, right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. So I want to give all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh Bashmi Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible, and Yahweh Bashmi Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kodash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel. Shalom.